going to be uh, Firebat versus Blue. So that's actually a right. pretty big match. Uh, whoever wins that will be the new first place in the group. Yeah, and we also can't forget that Life Coach actually beat Blue um, in the first uh, in their first match. So if there, if it comes to a tied situation, then Life Coach will still advance. I I think um, that the direct match score is the last consideration, though. Right. Well, it's the well the the last consideration is actually coin flips. Yeah, I mean the run right before that. <laughs> right. Right, so it goes uh, match score, um, game score, then tiebreaker, then coin flips. So there won't be any rematches, um, no matter what happens here. Yep. All right, so with that, uh, we are going to go to a quick break. I'm going to try to refresh the stream uh, and see if we can get fix some of these lag issues. Uh, when we come back, we will have Firebat versus Blue. All right, guys, looks like uh, the lag issues from the last match were so bad that we skipped right through the commercials, and we might be going straight to our next next match already, uh, which is, uh, I guess, kind of a reward for you guys kind of uh, dealing with all that lag there in the previous matches. So we're going to go directly into Firebat versus Blue. Firebat is playing Priest, Paladin, and Mage. Whereas uh, Blue is playing Priest, Warrior, and Rogue in this particular matchup. Yeah, just a very interesting Priest deck overall. Uh, not only does it have Death Lords, but Jeweled Scarab as well. Uh, not typically a card you find in uh, in Dragon Priest. Um, it's just overall, we, we can't really tell if this is a Dragon or a, or a Control Priest, but it definitely looks to be leaning towards the... Um, the control priest variation, probably, I would, I want to say like it's the worst of the two variations against freeze mage because at least with the dragon variation, you sometimes have cards like Doctor Boom. Um, um, you have more of a chance of getting Ysera as well, so more of a chance to kind of um, like pressure down the freeze mage. Whereas with control priest, like you have very few opportunities to pressure your opponent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with the Dragon Priest, you can you know get those minions on the board. That's how Dragon Priest kind of works. You you compete for the board, and at least you can kind of pressure your opponent that way and hope your opponent doesn't have the greatest hand. But uh, looking at this, could this potentially be Whoa. Reno Priest? Um, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of random cards in there, and um, I was saying it's less likely to be Dragon Priest because there's Jeweled Scarabs and Death Lords, but now we see a Chill Maw in this deck, which is Really confusing to me. We also see a Colette Oracle in the uh, the Mage of Firebats. And right, so uh, this is almost certainly Reno mm -hmm. Freeze Mage here. And uh, does pick up a, a few of the cards that allow him to play Reno. Um, you know, as we see the duplicate Frostbolt in his hand, or sorry, the Frost Nova, excuse me. And uh, but also the Frostbolt, the Icelands, um, the Secrets as well, pretty important. And uh, Doomsayer, I believe. So I think Firebat's pretty close to be able to being able to activate Reno if he ever does pick it up. Uh, as far as Blue is concerned, um, we do see the double duplicate um, uh, Valence chosen. So looking less likely that it is going to be 
the Reno Priest. And I have seen a Re Reno Priest in the Chinese meta. I have casted the game in the Hearthstone team story. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, what is kind of almost in the uh, outside of the realm of possibility is the sports revived in the next turn. Uh, double Frost Nova Doomsayer is just kind of like lethal for um, for the priests. You really need Shadow Word Pain, or there's n really no way else to deal with this. Yeah, and uh, even if you had Shadow Word Pain, like you say, there's another Frost Nova Doomsayer. Looks mm -hmm. like Blue is just going to have to maybe draw a card here, but other than that, not much. Right. So actually, outside of um, Shadow Word Pain, the other two ways, the, the other two most common ways I've seen of dealing with this are Velen's Chosen into, or sorry, um, Vol'jin into Holy Nova or Holy Smite, and the third most common way is um, Nightmare into Shadow Word Death. That's how desperate p players usually <laughs> are to deal with Doomsayers. Yeah, definitely. As the priest. So, what do you think about this play here from Blue? Doesn't draw a card. He could have cycled uh, that Northshire Cleric, drawn a card, and still not overdrawn the next turn. Do you think there's a chance he's maybe misreading this deck as not a Reno deck and perhaps some sort of mill mage? Um, yeah, it's definitely possible. I think it's, it was actually, honestly, the correct play to go for the heal on the minion and draw a card. Because the way you win this matchup is by kind of like smorking down the priest. Or rather, smorking down the uh, the mage, and he's definitely not looking anywhere near to accomplishing that goal. Um, you also shouldn't be worried about milling so much because there's so many like so many cards that draw cards for your opponent, and I believe Firebat is way ahead on cards drawn uh, from his deck, around like three or four cards. Yeah, I mean. Uh... Just to be completely honest, uh, when I was casting Blue um, in his run to this point, um, there were a couple of subpar plays along the way. Uh, there are definitely very strong Chinese players um, throughout. And I don't want to like disparage players, but uh, just giving my honest opinion as far um, as what I perceive the skill of uh, these players. So uh, without <laughs> trying to be as PC as possible, but... Um, yeah, I just I don't think he's as strong, uh, to be completely honest, as some of the other Chinese players that we're going to see in this tournament. Right, you, that's that's fair, as we can see um, from some of his like more rash decisions, um, like his shredder placements, um, his um, not playing around like warrior armor, for instance. Um, also, just his um, like his leaving game so quickly, whereas I think most other players would have stayed in the games. Um, he left on a turn six, for example, I believe. Yeah, left on a turn six and left on uh, a separate play where he could have, uh, you know, tried to go for the last four damage on his opponent um, when he kind of lost board, control of the board, but was at least two turns from dying. But in any case, uh, looking at this game, um, looks like Firebat might be starting to go on the offensive here. Uh, well, okay, that's the Forgotten Torch, right? That's not the Roaring Torch. Uh, no, that's, uh, that's Forgotten Torch, right? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, he just wants to kind of cycle that, I suppose. Um, besides the draw card first, you can, uh, go for the Roaring Torch, or sorry, the Forgotten Torch into drawing cards just to, uh, increase your chances of getting that Roaring Torch, but I guess he doesn't want burn right now. He has plenty of burn in hand. Um, so, yeah, this is, and looking at blue side, this is looking more and more like it is going to be that Dragon Priest. Uh, just with a kind of a weird, or not weird, but a couple interesting uh, in, uh, inclusions into the deck. Uh, to, right. But, Sylvanas uh, isn't really that common these days, and Jeweled Scarab and um, Death Lord certainly aren't common at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I mean, I was definitely, obviously we were looking to see if it could be uh, sort of a Reno Priest, just because Reno Priest, if it was a Reno Priest, which I have seen... Uh, and I saw it last week in the Hearthstone team story, um, and it worked really, really well against uh, Mage, if I remember correctly, or Freeze Mage, because you're able to heal all the way back up after they kind of burn you down. So, um, yeah, it was something to look out for, but as it stands, still going to, going to be an unfavored matchup. That said, 7-8 and 6-6 six, six is kind of hard for uh, for Mage to deal with. Mm hmm uh, funny enough, there wasn't a Emperor Thorazin on this turn. 
I wonder why that was. Um, uh, to be fair, Firebat is kind of uh, getting a bit low on health, and might maybe he wants to be a bit bit more greedy with the Doomsayer into Frost Overplay because um, after that he can get a free Emperor Thor's in against an empty board, in which uh, Blue pretty much is forced to use a Shadow Word Death. After he uses his first Shadow Word Death, there's much less of a possibility that he has a second one in order to deal with the uh, Alex Straza and Antonius that are sure to follow up. Mm -hmm. What do you think about all the Holy Novas that Blue has been using uh, to kind of heal himself? I feel like he's going to need that later if he wants to hold on. And maybe he was all in on having this board survive, but uh, after yeah. this, it's looking pretty dire. I, I think with the how this matchup usually goes, I think it's okay for him to just focus on using Holy Novas to make sure his board survives. But on the other hand, I think it's a little suspect that he's playing the Holy Novas so quickly, so willy-nilly. Yeah. We do see the second call at Oracle, so maybe Blue's uh, decision to not get himself milled was a solid one, potentially. But uh, it's looking like the beginning of the end for Blue, uh, particularly because... Um, Wow, he's kind of. It looks like he's kind of lost here. <laughs> wanted yeah. to play, wanted to play the Welp, but realized it wasn't buffed, and then from there just decided to go that, with the North Shore Cleric. I think that's one of those scenarios where, um, if like the yellow border wasn't around every minion that had its effect activated, he would have just played that. Yeah, it could be the case. Um, Firebat looks like he's just gonna pyroblast the face. He can go for an additional. Uh, 11 damage here with the Frostbolt Icelands. Icelands. Um, Firebat's actually running out of cards, and um, I think... I mean, he's got to have Antonidas and Alexstrasza in there somewhere, right? Yeah, they just might be his two of his last three cards. I would estimate that he has about three cards left, honestly. One of them is probably, like, Arcane Intellect. I'm not actually actually even sure that Reno Jackson is, is in this deck because we've seen so many duplicates. Two Cold Light Oracles, two Novice Engineers. Mm -hmm. This just might be a complete cycle deck. Wow. Yeah, we see two Forgotten Torches in this deck, so just a lot of extra burn. Wow, what a interesting deck. Just, uh, I guess it just, he just wants to get to the Forgotten Torches as quickly as possible, while keeping the Fireballs in his deck as well. So, yeah, very interesting game. Looks like Firebash just going to straight up take it right here with a ridiculous amount of burn. Uh, even goes for the BM Icelands on the North Shire Cleric. That's going to be it. 1-0 to Firebat. Wow. He goes up in this best of five. Seven overkill that game, or <laughs> that last turn, because he could have gotten, he could have used the other torch, and he didn't ha he wasted an Icelands there. So, really one-sided match from Firebat, in which, uh, like you said, it, this probably is almost a mismatch, in which Firebat is probably, like, the better player of the two by quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and especially with, you know, reasonable decks that he's piling right here, uh, the Priest and the Paladin, uh, to be able to go against uh, Blue's Priest, Warrior, and Rogue. Probably going to be able to see Firebat going for... <laughs> That's a mind blast. Uh, it's right. Kind of, so uh, this is, this is I, along I the lines of... I couldn't finish my of, statement. I had to, like, stop right there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Along the lines of Freeze Mage, uh, this might be Firebat's Freeze Priest deck. Yeah, I've seen him play it kind of as a joke on ladder, but the fact that he's bringing it right here is absolutely hilarious. Well, I talked to him about this deck, and he actually doesn't think it's that big of a joke. He actually thinks it's like like a relatively legitimate deck. Relatively. Well, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> the Priest Mirror seems to be like the exact uh, matchup that you want. Again, like Freeze... Any Freeze decks which uh, go into a huge combo probably will do really good against uh, against Priest, a really defensive deck. And yet another really strange card for Blue in this Dragon deck, a Light of the Naru, which is, again, typically only a reserve for control Priest archetypes. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of hard to see how he fits in all these cards and is able to use uh, his dragons as well. I guess the Blackwing te Technician potentially he does have the Chillman in hand to kind of buff that up. I'd imagine that would be the uh, pickup here, other than Shadow Form, which, I mean, I don't know if it really synergizes with this deck too well, so, yeah. Uh, Firebat will probably be happy if Blue chooses Shadow Form here. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably be pretty happy about that. He looks like he's... Oh my god, he's gonna do wow. it. Firebat, uh, yeah, I mean, this deck is all about that damage, so... I, I don't think... Firebats, he... I mean. 
Yeah, I don't think Firebat or I don't think Blue is really familiar with Firebat. Uh, typically, likes to run uh, for priests or rather his stream. Uh, this this could be just a grave error. <laughs> this is this is one of the most interesting things. I goes for the farseer. Uh, no, I I can see that um, if I guess it's a heal card. It synergizes with um, Northshire cleric. Back when there weren't as many good priest cards in priest, uh, farseer was actually just used to control priest because it could heal. It could synergize with um, Akanai soul priest. It could synergize with Northshire cleric. Overall, a decent card. Very true. Um, it, I don't, I doubt he has any sort of Akanai's in his deck though. So, um, in any case, we are going to see a light bomb to kind of get rid of that uh, fire bat. Unable to kind of put anything on the board to continue that pressure anyway. So, he's not going to be too sad about that. Though he could have uh, healed the other minion, uh, the other pyromancer, to kind of get out of range, I believe. So, um, yeah, maybe he's regretting that at this point. Does play the Thoros and to kind of keep the pressure up. Um, discounts those uh, Holy Fires, which uh, doesn't... I don't know if that matters in the grand scheme of things. you know what uh, kind of combo pieces he has in here? Uh, probably uh, Valen and then two Mind Blasts. I think the Holy Fires are um, a combination of for survivability and to get some chip damage in against some classes that don't have reliable healing. Right. Um... Um, but you know what? If... If Fireback can keep this Emperor alive for a few more turns, this uh, Holy Fire could actually be part of this combo. It absolutely wow. And value Holy Fire. <laughs> absolutely value. Well, he gets to draw another card, which is pretty good. Gets to discount something else with his, uh, his Thorsten. And uh, there we go. Holy Nova discounted. Now you can use Holy Nova and, and uh, Holy Fire on the same turn, Monk. Everything oh, you've man. always dreamed of. That is my dream of being that holy. You know, that's why my <laughs> name is Monk, of course. <laughs> Obviously. All right, so it looks like we're probably going to see a steal onto this uh, North Star cleric. Uh, this is uh, a bit surprising since he'll leave this Emperor Thorzane up for yet another turn. The dream, right? The dream, as Firebat likes to say on his stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna be getting zero mana Shadow of Death as well pretty soon. Um, I mean, is there a way to kill that? By the way, oh, with the Holy Nova, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's okay. basically it. He can um, play again, the Shadow as well, but then that kind of uh, you know prohibits him from uh, buffing the rest of the dragons in his uh, hand potentially. So it looks like it is going to be that Steel and just gonna hit face. And... I honestly don't think Blue knows what he's facing. Well, I mean, has there been much to kind of indicate that is that crazy? Well, here's the thing. Oh, wow, that's pretty yeah. huge as well. He's just going to be able um, to clear this board without even using Light Bomb. Yeah, and he's not going to be too afraid of a Cabal Shadow Priest either. The thing is here, like, I think, I bet Blue, because he doesn't, he's not familiar with this deck, he's probably thinking, okay, he's just Priest. Honestly, like, I don't care if my opponent gets Emperor spells or Emperor minions with Priest. He can't really do any burst damage. And I always have things like Light Bomb um, to get back the board. So Blue might be thinking he's in a like an actually okay situation, which uh, I probably would disagree with. Um, also, another strange turn. He could have just healed this turn. Instead, he plays a minion that's vulnerable to Kapal Shadow Priest. Yeah, definitely... Um kind of playing a little bit too quickly is blue and uh, firebat gonna go ahead and you know Alex shots to the face which will get countered by this big game hunter this game is just really weird to be honest yeah. big game hunter and priest that's also one I haven't seen before to be honest yeah um, right so I mean this game has actually gone pretty back and forth. Firebat uh, had the board, then uh, was taken over by Blue, then you know Firebat cleared it himself, and then now back in the blue. But now we have uh, what's that card again? Excavated Evil. Excavated Evil. So able to use that to clear his opponent's board. Uh, one more option for the for the uh, Freeze Priest, as he likes to call it, to clear the board, and it goes in the hand of Blue, which he can maybe use later. But for now, he's able to uh, clear the board with that. Pretty useful right here. 
lose. <laughs> He's going to play the chill ma and hope Firebat doesn't really have an answer for it. But those lethal? zero mana Shadow Word deaths are pretty uh, pretty threatening. Is that lethal? No, it's three off lethal. Yeah. Um, just a bit off. So I'm going to just draw one card off of this... Uh... Oh, wait, he's not well, going draw... to draw any cards. Oh, wow, yeah, it's just not going to go off. Okay. That's actually pretty bad for Firebat, because it'll just get a Cabal Shadow Priest. Dude. Yeah. He's not feeling too too happy about that. He actually wanted to get to draw the card, I believe. Yeah, um, but I think it's okay. Firebat's okay with it, because... Oh, that's actually a pretty huge draw as well. Um, I, I was going to say Firebat's okay with it, because um, even if uh, his opponent Cabal Shadow Priest, then that just means Firebat has lethal. There's probably no way to, like deal with everything here, uh, unless he draws exactly Shadow Word Death. Um, so the Excavated Evil draws an Excavated Evil for Firebats and puts an Excavated Evil in his deck. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> gonna just play the Excavated Evil just to put it in his opponent's deck, just to make, just to make it more likely that he draws a poor card. Firebat has nothing to do there, so it kind of makes sense. But uh, Blue is just gonna keep healing up. And is he going to commit to the Cobalt Shadow Priest? Is there a world where Blue just heals up for 15 turns, or rather for 7 turns and goes back to full health? Um, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Firebat has to draw a minion, obviously, sometimes soon, or some sort of burn. Uh, he does have 10 damage in hand, so if he can draw maybe the extra 7... Uh, could be something. Looks like Blue's playing pretty greedy, wanting to steal something. Uh, definitely steal something with the uh, Cabal Shadow Priest. But yeah, Firebat just running out of answers. Um, or sorry, not answers, but running out of ways to deal that last part of the damage. Yeah, and not only that, but he's running. He he doesn't have like uh, he doesn't have Emperor Thor's in anymore. So the discounted um, spells in his hand uh, probably won't be that good with Velen, uh, Prophet Velen. Like he can basically only do Velen, Mind Blast, Holy Smite on a single turn, and that's just not. A, that's only fourteen damage of burst. Well, there's oh. the Velen. So, I mean, he can go with the fourteen now, um, and there is no death for this. So. <laughs> is that just game? Well, it no. Let's uh, if blue draws death here, nope. Um, Valens into Holy Nova for three. He actually is one damage off being able to clear that. I mean, this is kind of the reason why you sometimes just want to play minions, right? Like the Cabal Shadow Priest, just because mm -hmm. sometimes you need to have that minion to minion combat, or else you're not going to be able to clear something like this Valens, and so. Yeah, it's Blue's in trouble, and I don't think he can get out of it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a way if there's any way for him to draw a card, but I'm not really seeing it. Um, he... Yeah, you have to Holy Nova and heal the Velen Chosen. No, the, sorry, the Prophet Velen. Yeah. But if he doesn't draw yeah. anything, he's just dead on board. So, yeah. that's, that was one of the weirdest games... One of the strangest ways that it's ended to uh, Firebat not getting the burst damage to kill his opponent, just having the Valens that his opponent could not deal with. Uh, Blue looks dejected, uninterested, not really sure. Yeah, he didn't actually seem that surprised when Velen actually hit the field. I was watching his face pretty closely. Um, there's really no indication of, oh my god, I can't believe he's playing this deck. I've never seen it before. I don't know if that's whether he's actually just he expected this or whether he just doesn't care as much, honestly. Yeah, it's always a kind of disheartening to see uh, when someone doesn't really get too up for a match. Even I mean, Firebats played on the biggest stage, played in the World Championships, played in you know, DreamHack, just tournaments all over the world, and uh, I feel like I feel like he's putting in more effort than Blue here. What do you think? Yeah, um, probably quite a bit. Usually, it's the um, the open players that put in more effort because the like the the more popular players, the invited players generally have more tournaments. But it definitely seems like Firebat probably has prepared for this tournament slightly better. Um, I just want to mention that we saw Keeper of Ultimon in the Secret Paladin, 
And I think this is going to be um, kind of a new type of Secret Paladin has been hitting the ladder recently. It's going to be the egg version of Secret Paladin, which just means it runs egg as a two-drop, and in order to activate it, it uses Keeper of Oldemon, it uses Defender of Argus, it uses Avenge, which can be pretty threatening because if you can activate an egg consistently, that's just huge value for your deck. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, wait... Have you have you seen the egg version of Secret Paladin? I've seen the egg version of Midrange Paladin. Yeah, I've seen the egg version of Secret Paladin as well. Huh. So that's pretty interesting. Um, in any case, we will see if that's uh, going to be the case for this match. Looks like uh, Firebat took a chance. His opponent uh, wanted to play a 4-drop, but Blue deciding to go uh, heal his guy instead of playing his Twilight Guardian, which uh, would not have gotten buffed anyway, so I guess that's fine. Now, isn't, this, isn't this just like the worst hand you've ever seen? From whom? From uh, Firebat. I mean, yeah, I guess it's pretty he, bad. But he has a mysterious before challenge. Before he, it, so. yeah, before he drew the pilot shredder, it was pretty bad. That's true. Um, but you know, Doctor Six will, uh, you know, right all wrongs. So he's, uh, <laughs> in that perspective, he's kind of okay. Yeah, he's not even gonna get a noble sack from it though, since he has both in the hand. Yeah, it always feels bad when uh, you have double secrets like that in the hand and aren't able to pick up one. Obviously, you want to just cycle those through. Uh, he also has a divine favor, as we can see. Um, I guess that's part of the hit Firebat's reasoning uh, to attack the Wormer's agent earlier, too, because maybe he's just kind of baiting his opponent to drawing too many cards, and you know he can uh, get that divine favor in the future. Yeah, exactly. Um... Blue, obviously, he's going to play this uh, Twilight Guardian. He's uh, just thinking about whether he wants to attack in and heal for three. I don't, I don't blame him for doing this. I think this is probably correct. Um, you want as many minions on the field when Firebat's going into his turn uh, five play with the coin, just so he can proc those Nova sac uh, potential Nova Sacrifices. Looks like Blue's going to give up his... Um, his uh, no, sorry, Cleric right here, just to be able to clear the first part of that Shredder. He's playing around Divine Favor. Props to him. <laughs> yep. Even though Firebat has a ton of cards already. So, uh, Dr. Six comes out. Uh, there were a couple other options that Firebat could have gone there, but it's pretty big to get this guy out just because you want to thin your deck. Uh, the worst feeling in the world is when you go for a different option than, than Mysterious Challenger, and he uh, and then the next card you draw is a secret, and you're like, ah, oh, that could have been something different. But, uh, yeah, going to go with the most powerful play. Uh, I'll kind of uh, similar to how one would play Dr. Boom. But um, not going to be too good for him here. Blue is going to be able to uh, just death this guy away and retain board control. Yeah, not really many options for Firebat to uh, get board control back. When you have Divine Favor in your deck and when you... Um... Uh, when you have Divine Favor, it basically means you probably don't have a quality in this deck. So, a quality probably was the best thing you could have gotten. Yeah, looking worse and worse for Firebat in this particular game. And, uh, obviously Firebat is in a good position overall in this series, uh, being up 2-0. Uh, even if he loses this game, he's likely to take this series. Uh, but it should be said that um, every game matters, and... When we go to tie breaks, uh, every game that uh, one person has accumulated will matter as far as uh, determining who moves on. Yeah. For, uh, fortunately for Firebat, he's two matches up, so games actually don't matter unless he loses here. Yeah. Um, and even if he loses, I believe he has um, pretty good tiebreaker. So he went 3-1, three, 3-2, three, three, and even if he loses 2-3, he has a positive tiebreaker, which probably puts him uh, enough to advance. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the bigger thing, obviously, is is uh, Blue's chances of moving on, especially he's at that kind of critical uh, one and one right now. In any case, Blue, uh, with an interesting decision, he can hit for seven right now if he wants to, um, which is reasonable because he clears off this, uh, this ship's cannon as well. So, yeah, pretty, I mean, you know, whenever you get a chance to hit your opponent for seven, sometimes you just do it, right? Yeah, whenever you, whenever you set up lethal, you just do it as well. And this puts Firebat in a really crappy spot. Um, 
he can't he has to consecrate because um unless you know blue has an aneurysm he's not going to attack with the uh Light Warden first, if there's a Noble Sacrifice. So yeah, Firebat basically has to Consecrate, and from there he only has 3 mana, which kind of sucks. Um, nope, enough for another Noble Sacrifice. Yep, could be the case. Uh, that and Honda Creeper is okay. But uh, yeah, no matter how you look at it, it just looks really bad. It looks like he just he realizes he's not going to win with his hand. He's just going to draw. So, By the way, I feel like there's something we need to comment on here, is, and that's there's a Thought Steal on this Dragon Priest. There's two oh, jeweled right. scarabs in this in this dragon priest. <laughs> right, right. What is? Wait, what does the he heck have, is going on here? Does he have fifty cards in this deck? Like, what is what is happening? Oh, well, goodness. he actually he actually does have fifty cards because uh, jeweled scarab gives you two more. Thought seal gives you two more. <laughs> Eventually, you get to all those cards, right? That's the saddest repentance in the world. And. Um, yeah, just goes ahead and plays the Star Cultist. Looking really bad for Fire, but has zero answers in his hand right now. Just all uh, questions, essentially. And looks like he's probably going to concede, haunting this board state. Unless, what is he reaching for? Oh, Knife Juggler. Okay, knife juggler. Maybe some crazy knife, knives. How crazy could it get, actually? I think he has to swing in first, doesn't he? Or maybe not. I guess with the Noble Sacrifice... Like something crazy could happen, but uh, yeah, Firebat playing this out to the bitter end, making sure he doesn't miss a potential miracle comeback. Yeah, you have to respect it. He's not giving up. He's not <laughs> Blue. Down to hell. <laughs> not giving up uh, like a certain opponent. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. But uh, looking pretty bad. No lethal here for Blue yet. Uh, he could just play Yastera and just try to find something. Ooh. Firebat really wanted that knife on the Dark Ultis there. Uh, none of these guys gives Blue lethal. He picks up to death just in case because he has a handful of minions. Probably just Dr. Boom here, right? Yeah, just gonna play Dr. Boom. Really almost no way to deal with this. Yeah, also there's a chance for Firebat to just kill himself on the next turn. Yep. Alright, so that's going to spell the end, I believe, at least for this game. So is there any world in which... Uh... Because I... he drew the um, the Cog Hammer, he now has a chance if he <laughs> clears this board. Or that... mostly clears the board. Yeah, that's true. I guess Cog Hammer is a thing right now. Unfortunately, we know from our perspective that unless he cog hammers um, one of the bigger minions, or unless he cog hammers exactly knife juggler, he's dead. Yeah. Shadow Word Death yeah, exactly. kills him. <laughs> yeah, Cabal um, or Shadow Word Death. Cabal, yeah, exactly. It's just that uh, the key three or four health. 104. Nope. Nope. So from his perspective, he's still alive. Uh, well, he probably knows there's a good chance he's dead, but yeah. That's going to be it. Yep. Blue takes the game off of Firebat, and that's going to be two games to one in Firebat's favor. And that leaves actually the Warrior and the Rogue for Blue. So, actually, not out of the water quite yet. Uh, both of those decks quite capable of defeating Secret Paladin. Yeah, it just really depends on how they're teched, I guess. Um, cards like. Uh, unstable ghoul in control warrior is something that I'm somewhat fond of, um, and it's gonna be Ooh. oh it's it's a death row. This rogue. is gonna be this is gonna be raptor rogue, and it's really interesting um, that we see both deadly poison and blade failure in it. Um, a lot of people have been experimenting a lot with a lot of different variations of raptor rogue, and the ones that are most popular and most effective, at least on the NA server, are ones that cut almost every um, rogue spell. So they don't have Deadly Poison, so they don't have Blade Fury. Mm -hmm. And instead, they, they're more minion focused. They're more focused on the um, the the overall uh, synergy between the minions in the deck and less focused on just the the generically okay cards in Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, they have, still have the OP cards, like Backstab, um, like 
um, eviscerate. And sometimes, like the meta cards, like Fan and Knives, to clear off Secret Paladin, um, Secret Paladin. But they cut the cards like Deadly Poison, the cards like Blade Flurry, that don't necessarily work into the um, the general idea of Raptor Rogue. What about uh, Backstab? Oh, Backstab is just too amazing to cut. I feel it also helps you get board control. Mm-hmm. So that's not a card that people cut either. Um, it's usually what I see is there's only ten cards that are usually put in almost every variation of Raptor Rogue, and those are Backstab, Eviscerate, um, the Raptor, the SI Agent, and Fan of Knives. So f- two copies of each of those. And everything else is um, kind of just uh, do whatever you want with those. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so I was going to say that, uh, I mean, Oil Rogue is good against Secret Paladin because of all the answers that it has. But in particular, Rogue, as a, just as a class, has a lot of answers versus Paladin in general. Obviously, uh, as long as you don't take too much damage, the Rogue Hero Power kind of counters it, just because you kind of get a two-for-one in that sense, as far as mana is concerned. Um, and, you know, things like the Noble Sacrifice can get proc pretty easily by a Rogue as well. Um, if uh, Blue decides to go for a Hero Power here, uh, this Knife Juggle will be very huge. i uh, see if it goes to the face. Or hits the uh, loot hoarder. Alternatively, he could play this uh, this egg and then allow himself to copy that next turn with the raptor. Yeah, it's such a strong play. Um, although, if if this uh, juggler somehow survives with like a redemption, huh. yeah. Well, I- yeah, um, then it won't get copied because the owl will come into play. And that'll be just huge um, because there's really no way for uh, Blue to get back on board. He doesn't really want to play the Raptor just as a vanilla 3-4. Yeah, definitely. That's that's one of the problems with Raptor, right? If you can't copy anything early on, uh, either you just play a Temple Raptor for 3-4, which kind of feels bad, or you wait, which is really bad for Temple as well. Um, so it looks... We'll see what he goes with. It looks like he's just going to play out the 3-4, which obviously does contest the board. However, he just, just gets Repentance, which is pretty good here. You typically don't get a good Repentance on turn 3, but uh, working out for Firebat right now. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Wow, even gets the Cog Hammer. Uh, so I guess the Cog Hammer, which is pretty good. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's pretty good. I think it's almost game-winning here, considering Blue's hand. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Uh, wow, that's a big draw, though. Um, but the problem is is that Blue has a pretty quality hand, whereas Firebat doesn't. You know, he's going to be top-decking here. Oh, but he, he, he can top-deck uh, Palashar as well, it seems like. Yeah, he, he can top-deck with the best of them. All right, so Firebat maintaining that lead, and it's going to be just basically the tempo uh, that Firebat gains, which is, you know, how, uh, how Secret Paladin generally wins. That backside was huge, though. Yeah. It seems like uh, just a quintessential Hearthstone match. Players are top decking against each other all the time. <laughs> uh, second call camera is actually decent. Um, so you might hit, just see him kind of just play that out. Looks like he... Oh yeah, he's just going to just use the call camera to get the Dove Iron Shield on this uh, Shredder to get a really good trade. Makes sense. And uh, continue to have... Tempo and every time Firebat, you know, top decks something not horrible is really good for him because he's getting closer and closer to being able to play that Tyrion, which is obviously huge. Yeah, he basically only needs to quote unquote top deck once more, and by top deck I mean he needs any like decent minion. I think he'd be even happy with a yeah, shielded mini bot, for instance. Wow, really? Just a quick flurry there. Although, fair in fairness, Firebat has only two cards in hand, so kind of makes sense in that regard. And, right, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, that's a pretty well, good top tech. That's, that a, that's a little better than Shield and Minibot. Arguably the best. Uh, it's close to Dr. Boom. Uh, which, which one would you rather? I guess you'd rather see this one, right? Just to thin out your deck? Right. Yeah, so maybe just even the best one. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Pretty good top deck. Firebat pretty good this game. And uh, if you're Firebat, are you scared of this, Drake? I mean, you've seen a bunch of... Uh, death rattle. So maybe you just are. Maybe you just hit face here. No, you're you're not. You're playing Raptor Rogue. You're not playing uh, Oil Rogue. So I don't think there's any way you're afraid of this trick. And there's the concede. They actually had the uh, banner ready on the bottom for Blue's fast concede. There. <laughs> they had it ready right when <laughs> they <came> learned. 
<laughs> All right, so there you go. Firebat wins the group. Uh, very impressively, 3-1 against Zero, 3-2 against Life Coach, and 3-1 against Blue. That puts him, uh, what would that be, 9 and 4 on the day, so plus 5. Obviously, it's a bit uh, meaningless because, you know, he just dominated as far as series score. So, yeah, congratulations to him. He moves on to the final round. Uh, if you guys are unaware, the final round is similar to how we're playing this right now. Uh, once there's eight players left, it's the same thing. They have to uh, play all nine classes throughout the tournament to be able to win the tournament. So if they use three classes in the quarterfinals, they can't use those classes in the semifinals, and so forth and so on, until one person wins the biggest share at that 25k. Uh, we are going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll have our last match, Zoro versus Life Coach, and this will decide who is in second place and who... Uh, moves on to that final tournament with Firebats. See you guys then.